What's up guys, welcome back, Matt with Bam Ranch. Wonderful to have you here on this beautiful September day. So, late September, summertime weather's moving out and that can only mean one thing, winter is just around the corner. And if you haven't got what you need put together yet to get through a winter power outage or some other type of grid down scenario, whether that be long term or short term, come winter time, that's what we're going to cover today and don't worry i'm not going to make you spend a whole bunch of money to get there so the ice storm or blizzard or you know tree that blew down and crushed the power lines or whatever just happened and all of a sudden you've entered into a personal shtf and you're all your powers out so what are our priorities and what do we need to do here before we go breaking out all of the you know cool prepper heaters and all of that stuff let's discuss some of the basics right so first thing we need to do is kind of get some intelligence on is it you know a very temporary thing after about you know 30 minutes or so then we need to start looking in what we're going to do to get us through this thing first thing you do go and get a blackout bucket right the blackout bucket has everything you need to be able to deal with the immediate problem of the power supply issue in five minutes what does it have in it? Well, it's got things like charging cords for your phone, flashlights with extra batteries. It's got extension cords, area lights such as lanterns and things like that. Maybe power banks to power your de devices. This is just the stuff that we need right now immediately to keep our family functioning good. Some little glow sticks or something, hang one in the bathroom so the kids can, you know, they're not scared to death and it gives them something to carry around and play with right it's just establish a little bit of normalcy for our family so somewhere around the 30 45 minute hour mark we need to make a decision whether or not we need more than just let's keep the cell phones running and turn on some flashlights it's up to you on how you make that decision but it is something you need to think about and the thinking about it portion is free so we move on to something like generators or you know just the 49 dollar inverter that you plug into your car battery with the little alligator clamps, something along that lines to get power back up and running temporarily. Now, if it's cold outside, we're gonna need to keep our living area somewhat warm, right? Or at least not freezing to death and let's keep the pipes from freezing. These are lessons that could be learned over and over again by reading the stories from whenever the power grid almost failed in Texas. So the first thing we do isn't necessarily breaking out these guys, right? This starts long before winter even gets here. It's buying a bunch of plastic wrap, old tarps, trash bags can even work. But seal off all your windows, make sure all the drafts are taken care of. That quarter inch crack under your door that faces the north, you need to do something about that. A rolled up towel works just fine. but during a power outage situation, we need to go a little extra, right? It may not look great, but we need to go a little extra to make sure that all of that stuff is sealed up. Let's not let more cold air come in while at the same time keeping our warm air that we're working so hard to keep inside from going out. Wool blankets, this is the one that normally rides in my truck. I'm using it for a tablecloth right now. I've got several of these. This is a 100% wool Italian blanket. You can use it to close off a room, right? There's a ton of things we can do. Then we move on to heat. Well, one of the first things we can do if we're lucky enough to have gas or propane in our house is either plug the central heat and air unit into your generator or, you know what? It seems like a really good time to cook, to turn on the oven and make a meatloaf. That oven will put out a ton of heat. Maybe it's time to boil a big pot of beans, right? Once again, a ton of heat. If we need auxiliary to that, we start looking at these. And these are from Mr. Heater. These are the buddy heaters. I like these things. As you can see, I've got two of them. This one, obviously, twice the size of this one. It'll, they'll run off of either these little portable canisters. Let me unscrew it. They'll run off of either the small camping canisters or, you know, your standard barbecue grill type bottles, you know, your however big you use on your grill. 
they'll run off of those just fine as long as you have the adapter hose and the filter. Don't forget the filter because that's important. I have torn these up before from not using a filter on that hose. All right, get rid of these. One thing that should be incredibly obvious, and I don't know why people overlook it, but if you live in a climate that has cold weather, you've probably got some cold weather stuff. You've probably got a beanie. You've probably got a jacket. The same jacket that you wore when you left for work yesterday is the one that you wear in your house when your house gets cold. Why do I have to say that? I don't know, but there were thousands of people that were worried about freezing to death because they didn't put a jacket on when their house never really got below about 50 degrees. Pulling all your family into one singular room. If you're running auxiliary heat, you're gonna have to have some ventilation, but pulling all your family into one singular room and heating that one room, lining the walls with blankets, doing whatever you can to make it insulated climate inside of a climate, a shelter inside of a shelter. You could even set up a small tent and move everybody into that tent if things really start to get bad. Do not run a heater inside of a tent. Enough said about that. Your pets. I've got a whole bunch of animals, more animals than I ever thought I'd ever have. I'm, you know, I'm talking about house animals here. Cat and three dogs and uh, my kids are animals half the time. But getting everybody in the same room, we're all putting out our BTUs, we're all helping heat that room. So don't forget about that either. As a last resort, make sure your car is out of the garage. I don't mean open the garage door, I mean get that damn thing out of the garage. Turn it on, crank the heat. As a last resort, that's a wonderful shelter that'll stop you from dying if you did your job and put back enough fuel to make that happen. Keep in mind that that's probably the most energy inefficient way to burn fuel, but if that's the only option you have, it's the best option you have. While we're on the subject of that, let's go ahead and talk about some a little bit of cold weather gear. This right here lives in the truck. This has cold weather stuff. It never comes out of the truck. It stays in there all summer long because I'm not responsible enough to remember to put it back in. You notice how tactical the bag is? I don't want it to look like something that wants to be stolen. It's just a plain bag. Actually, my get home bag, my bug out bag for the truck is a Spider-Man bag. It's not 5'11", it's not some ultra cool guy gear. Yeah, it's Spider-Man. Although it is an extremely well-built Spider-Man backpack. What do I have in here? Well, basic stuff. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But military surplus mittens. I've got extra, extra gloves. Work gloves because you'd be surprised how much you need those. Extra beanies. I've got multiples of everything in here. Wool mittens. Keeping in mind that more than likely whoever's with you isn't going to have access to this stuff correction they didn't think ahead to bring it with them right i keep a couple extra jackets and things like that in the truck there's no reason i can't bring this inside give everybody a beanie does wonders use your brain keep it simple now then we've established it's a little bit longer term of a thing and we got to worry about food and water and things like that coleman camp stove if your house is all electric, you're probably gonna need some other way to cook because obviously the electric isn't there, at least not for the purpose of this video. These, just like the other heaters, will run just fine off of your big bottles or your little small portable bottles. There's a thousand different ones. Pick which one you like. No need to go fancy. The basic ones cook just fine. Keep in mind, these put out a whole lot more CO2 than just your... Did I just break that? Than just these. I guess I better fix that. I'm not even gonna edit that out, I'm gonna leave it in. So bear in mind, whenever you're talking about food storage, we're talking dump in pot, heat up. 
right? Boil water, add food. A lot of these things that don't need extensive cooking and stuff that we're gonna be able to cook on a camp stove are a lot of the directions we need to be looking with this stuff. So do you have food that's able to do that? Do you have water stored up? It doesn't take long for an entire city to lose their water pressure because everybody wants to run the water. First thing you need to do is fill up your bathtub. That water's not gonna be clean, but it'll give you something to flush the commode, you know, do dishes, wash your hands, you know, soap and water. But drinking water, you're gonna to need to have that stuff stored. You look into the seven meals plan. I've discussed it several times in, you know, in the past. I'm not gonna get into that, but having some easy to cook meals, easy to prepare meals to pick from is gonna be good. Another option is, you know, your good old fashioned barbecue grill. Most of us already have one. Yeah, it's gonna suck, you know, going out in the middle of a winter storm to cook, but we've got all this stuff in the refrigerator that's gonna spoil, so we probably better get on the ball with cooking that stuff. So move all that stuff to coolers, move it outside if you can. Hey, sounds like a wonderful time to have a blizzard burger to me. Okay, so I don't like it, but it has to be said. We gotta worry about fire danger during the winter time. Everybody's trying to use alternative heat and all that. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it. Smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors. And are you kidding me? You sleep beside a pistol every night, but you don't own a fire extinguisher. What are you even doing here? Just because you did everything perfect doesn't mean that one neighbor that does something stupid can't burn down the entire neighborhood. Having a water hose, things like that, that's all I'm gonna say about it. Do what you need to do and buy the freaking fire extinguisher. Now moving on. Now keep in mind, all this stuff is pretty much basic level stuff. It's just a quick skim across the surface. If you wanna go more in depth, what in the world is that noise? If you want to go more in depth on, you know, specific items and stuff that I specifically recommend, I would actually love to do that video, but I'm not going to do it unless y'all ask for it. So anyway, let me know what y'all do. Like I said, basic level stuff. You guys seem to be the smartest commenters on YouTube. So the real information is down in the comments below. Go ahead and tell me what you use. And until next time, you be safe.